thank you, sir. Mm. Holy crap. How do I find my, how do I find my system's weakest link? I want to upgrade, but don't know what will make the biggest difference. Yeah. Well, we get that question a lot. Yep. You know, yep. I, I mean, I've answered it for decades in a two channel world. People are always looking to see, you know, most, most people I think that uh, I've been in it a long time and have an existing system. In the back of their mind, they usually have an idea of what's the weakest link. And they're kind of looking for someone to just kind of justify it. But uh, in headphones, I mean, yeah, I mean, think it's kind of the same thing. I mean, how would you know what your weakest link is? Try other things, <laughs> you know. I guess. You know, go yeah. to meets. I mean, see well, what other okay, let's like. let's say it, let's ask it a different way then. Given your current systems at home, what's yeah. what's the weakest link? You already know, right? Yeah. What? DAC. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yours? <laughs> well, it's tricky because I think <laughs> it really depends on what you care about. Because as it turns out, different people really focus in on different things. And so the weakest link to one person may not necessarily be the weakest link to another. Well, sure. You can't really go by price point per se, so that's a challenge there too. Not necessarily. It has a lot to do with your tastes and what you're expecting out of the music too, because not everybody's looking for a flat, neutral response, and not all gear offers that either. So sometimes you could have gems in there that just work wonderfully. Other times you have stuff that's doing something you really are totally unaware of. Yeah, but how do you know? That's the question. Yeah. That's the difficult part, right? Yeah. That's always really challenging. The easiest way, I think, is try different gear. That's well, I mean, the that's the surefire way. That yeah. also for a lot of people is difficult. But yeah. that could be challenging they too. They just don't have like, you know, a 7-Eleven. They could go over a store, well, corner store right. and get, but that lets you know well, for let's sure. pick up a deck and take it home and try it. But yeah, but yeah, I hear you. But that's, that is the issue. Like I run in with, when people call and ask that similar question, that same question, their, their main, the reason they tend to be asking is they don't have the ability to try it. Right. Yeah. And it's, a, it's a problem. It's an uphill battle, you know. So, I mean, that's cool because that's what we're here for. Yeah. Call, call us. Right, you know, I mean, there's a number of companies that manufacturers that have gobs of experience with sound of the, all these different pieces. How many pieces have we tried? Hundreds. And anything they do that comes we, out, try. We know from feedback from customers. If right, you hear yeah. a repetitive, we don't. I wouldn't take like any one person right. word for it and say, oh yeah, you know, it's good or bad because one guy told me. Mm -hmm. But you usually hear enough re repetition in product lines that you know, you get a good idea of what any particular manufacturer's piece might sound like, right? At least you get in the right direction, you know. Yeah. So if the customer, so if someone wants to know, well, what's the weak link, then it would be, well, you'd really have to, you'd, you'd have to look at the entire system. Of course. You really would. I mean, that's the way I would do it. And uh, two-channel world is the same thing. What do you got? What, what's your amplification speakers? You know, what cabling you're running? You know, what kind of music you listen to, you know? Are you in a tiny room or in a hall? You know, let's, let's look at how much power he needs for amplification in that sense, you know. So you can usually pick out. I think you can get pretty close. If, and I think, I think most customers know, though. I really do. I think, you know, but, mm. you know, because you already have an existing system. If you're saying, yeah, what's you're my weak link? You put it together. Yeah, already. you got it. Yeah. You know, and you spent the money and you kind of knew what you were after. And yeah. then if something disappointed you there, it might be hard to figure out what it is. I guess sometimes it's hard. But I think over time you start to feel it out. Well, yeah. the tricky thing is I think a lot of times people grow attached to a certain gear for whatever reason. They just so happen to like their deck. They like the way it well, looks, yeah. the way it behaves, whatever. They like something in yeah, their in their chain. It could always be and an so issue. that could be the weak link. Yeah. And they're not going to see it. Right. And so it's challenging sometimes to uncover these things if you can't try other gear. And so maybe in certain situations the forms would be your best resource. But if your gear isn't popular enough, People aren't going to know how it sounds, how well it performs. Yeah. So in my mind, it can it's be a really the challenging headphone. situation. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, not our well, headphones. It's, it is the easiest thing, though, <laughs> but, yeah. to, to try another gear, though. You could just bring your headphone. Yeah. That's the easiest thing. That, it, it, easier than carrying an amp with yeah, you. Yeah, right. Oh, that's for sure. Or yeah. speakers. Yeah. yeah. So Because even if you go to a show, you go to a trade show, you could bring your headphone with you, and at least that's one part of the chain, so you could kind of ignore everything else. Yeah, you kind of know what that sounds like. But right, what if that's the weak link? Now you're judging now everything you based on the sound of a, a flaw, yep. Yep. right? Which happens all the time in electronics and headphones. And at a show, you have all kinds of unfamiliar gear it's stacking tough to up. tell. I mean, I've narrowed this down even worse when you get customers that call, you know, and they want to know what the what, what cable they should replace. Right. So now you got to fine tune. You really got to hone in on what they're doing and what they're trying to accomplish, you know, like, 
Because now at that point it becomes even more subjective, and it's like, well, you know, what 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 do you have now for cables? You got to understand the sound of those, and relate to what where he's trying to go with the system. You got to yep. know the sound. So it's, it gets even it gets difficult. It's simple for me now because I've been doing it for so many years, but. It's difficult if you don't know the sound of all this, all the different electronics, the cabling, well, well, the headphones. If you don't understand that or haven't tried it, so I mean, trade shows. The shows are the best. The Can Jam is great. You know. Yeah, everything under one roof. Yeah, I mean, you might not be able to mix and match everything. Well, but that's damn. a tricky thing. What if you have something you already like and you're looking for an amplifier? Yeah. You could hear an amplifier in one setup and you could like it, you could hate it, could. but it could be the supporting gear around it that's yeah. causing you to like or hate it. Yeah. You might be able to walk around with your, at least like you said, with your existing Maybe. headphone. But, but yeah, I mean, really, I think you should. I mean, I guess I know a lot of guys don't trust talking to dealers or manufacturers, but some of the guys there know their shit, you know. But how do you know? Well, yeah, yeah that's, it's like an auto mechanic don't. or something. Yeah. <laughs> well, some are great. Some you know, not so much. it's one of those buyer beware things. I think you need to weigh out. You can talk to more than one person, and you know, if you get some, so everybody saying the similar thing, Maybe. it kind of gives you a direction. You don't have to choose anything that anybody tells you. Yeah. You don't have to purchase that amp that three guys tell you, but hmm. I, think yeah. you'd, I think you'd find a pretty common ground. Yeah, research. Yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah you'd, pretty you'd much. You get a general consensus. Especially if you're spending the big bucks. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's a little lot. easier in the high end. There's not as much gear yeah. out there, yeah. but in the low end, there's so much. Yeah. It's really challenging to know how everything will interact together because some things are going to have some sort of minor flaws, which maybe isn't a big deal on its own, but then you start stacking them together, and it could go really south yeah, and guys on a budget they don't like wasting money you know well, they, of course, really, nobody you're, does if you only got a little bit to spend you want to spend it wisely Absolutely. so it's tough that's research you just got to do your research you got to do your homework i think head and some of the other forums are probably a good place to go and you know there's because they, they have they have threads based on all these individual products and they're like-minded individuals yeah. And, yeah so you can find people that click with you what you're looking for and your price ranges and that's the easiest way. It's sometimes tough. I always wonder how dealers like sell, like once you get used to the, the high end, when you get used to the real expensive stuff, or even reviewers. Yeah, it, especially reviewers. Yeah, it seems it. like hard to, to review sub thousand dollar sure. category. Yeah. It's like, you just gotta put it in, I guess, in a price class and compare it to what other stuff, but it seems difficult. Yeah, but I mean, you could always break out of that class if it actually provides better perceived value. There's possibilities that something could be slightly more but way better. And so maybe the $200 thing isn't great value because a $300 thing or a $400 thing is just so light years ahead, yeah. which is totally possible. Those are the guys would find the gems though. Yeah. Because they know if, you know, if you're in the high end and you know what that sounds like and you find something that's inexpensive that comes anywhere near it, well, you're yeah. like, whoa, this is something you really want to play with. Those, those guys with a lot of experience, I think, are the guys you really want to listen to, if you're, especially if you're just getting started. You know, yeah, it's a good it's a good way to it's assemble. It's a good starting things. point for sure. Yeah, for sure. Well, I know I I look at low end stuff, a lot of it. You yeah. know, I mean, you kind of learn what to look for. You know, yeah, what's probably going to be better than that. And there's some stuff that in the low end that competes with much higher end stuff that's nowadays. True. Yeah, that's true. So until you get into like the nitty, the real deep yeah. nitty gritty. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. But there's some few things people, out there be, that it's like be no annoying. brainer. Get this if you're on a budget. You want to spend a yeah. hundred dollars. Get this. Especially yeah. in amplifiers now, you can get yeah. great amplifiers. A couple hundred bucks. A couple hundred bucks. Yeah. You know, well, maybe they don't compete speaking. with the high end stuff, the super high end stuff. But yeah. yeah, they won't have all the finesse. Yeah. Right. You know, they won't. They won't have the that real nice human sound to it, like a harmonic structure that you like. But they do so many things well that you're right. It, Close if enough. You're, yeah, especially if you're if you're not looking to spend thousands of dollars. Yeah. So. Well, not only that. Even if you are, you could use that in the meantime. Something that's good, yeah. but not exceptional. While you're looking for something right. that's, you know, you exceptional. Probably, you could probably always sell it too. That, I mean, it's used. I mean, yeah. someone's always yep. probably looking to try something like that. Yeah. You're not, yeah. You're not losing a ton of money in a few hundred dollar range, Usually versus not. versus thousands of dollars yeah. where you know that's that's the used market is just. Gonna, hmm. gonna kill you on resale. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. Well, I guess that wraps up another episode of Top of the Line. Uh, if Leave a comment down below and maybe we'll answer it in a future episode. And uh, subscribe if you want to see more content like this. See you guys. Some I don't want split. this amp. <laughs> I don't want this deck or whatever. The, well, there's Change like cable. two types of people out there. There's like purists that are like, I don't EQ anything, I don't want any DSP. And then there's people that all they do is EQ and DSP. Yeah. So it's yeah, really actually, one of two. Yeah, there's, there's one of two camps. Of it. Yeah. yeah, there's a few people now that are EQ. It's 
seemingly growing in popularity. If it fixes the problem, whatever it might be, you know, it's a lot easier than changing gear up. Well, yes. what a lot of people seem to...